Uh, hi there, very good evening. Thank you very much for joining me tonight again. Uh, in the last session, we had a look at the, uh, the basic research paradigm. And we're going to continue this uh, paradigm related framework uh, in coming weeks. And uh, tonight I'm going to start the first portion of that, which is the philosophy, research philosophy. So let's have a look at what it is. Now, when I'm calling it philosophy, there are so many philosophies when you do the research, the basic uh, uh, theory of your research, the basic approach of your research. There are so many, and I'm not going to discuss all of those. I discuss only what is appropriate to you. So I'll be discussing only four philosophies tonight. One is positivism, other one is the phenomenology or phenomenism. And the next one is about the subjectivism, and uh, the other one is the objectivism. Subjectivism, objectivism, positivism, phenomenology. Right, let's start with uh, positivism. Now, when you start a research, there is always uh, a philosophy that you should follow. Let me take an example here. You know, the example we always take is about the uh, blood sugar problem. Now, I was discussing about the blood sugar of a diabetic patient, and I was always talking about the factor, two main factors. One is the food you consume. The other one is the exercise you do. And these two things, if you adjust it, we can adjust the blood sugar. That is the existing theory. All doctors know, every single one know, every single diabetic patient know that there's a connection with the food you eat and the blood sugar you have in your blood. And all of us further know that there's a connection between the exercise we do and the blood sugar we have in our blood, right? It's clear. Now, the question is, if you find out the relationship between these two factors, blood sugar and the food, blood sugar and the exercise you do, if you find out the relationship, it can only manage your blood sugar, it cannot cure your blood sugar, right? It can only manage your blood sugar, you can put the blood sugar down, if you consume a little bit of food today and do some excess, excess uh, of exercise, it can put the blood sugar down. And tomorrow, if you come back to your food habit again, and if you uh, reduce the time of your exercise, your blood sugar will go up again because you are not curing it, you are managing it, right? Now, these doctors, they do tests. When you say uh, I'm faintish and I'm tired and so on, they do tests in the lab to find out what is causing your blood sugar to manage your blood sugar. They never do a test in the lab to cure your blood sugar, right? Cure your blood sugar. They only do a test here to manage your blood sugar. They never do a test to cure your blood sugar because uh, the lab settings we have in hospitals in, 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 in Sri Lanka or in any other country is not good enough to do a research on that to find out something which is not known to the world yet, right? Because I have a question. I have a, a doctor here as well. I have a question, any doctor here or any university here, do they know how to cure blood sugar? I don't think, nobody knows how to cure blood sugar permanently. They give you some medicine and your blood sugar will be back to normal. Your, your, your blood sugar is maintained continuously forever. You will never get the blood sugar problem again. There's no such solution here. There's no knowledge about it. If you speak to Google, Google will tell you that you can manage your blood sugar. You can put your blood sugar down like this. And if you don't do that, again, tomorrow the blood sugar will be high. So it is about managing. You don't have any option, any knowledge here at the moment to cure diabetes. You have only got treatment and knowledge about how to manage your blood sugar. Sorry, how to manage your diabetes or blood sugar. Yeah. Right? Right. So if you want to cure the blood sugar, you should do a research where you find out something new. If you want to manage your blood sugar, you do a research to confirm whether there's a relationship between this and that, between the food you consume and the blood sugar you have. So that is what I'm calling the positivism is about to confirm certain theories. In other words, to test a hypothesis. You have a hypothesis, blood sugar, has some relationship to the exercise you do. That is a hypothesis. You're just testing it. Is it right in your case, in this patient's case, in Wazima Kram's case, in this sportsman's case, in this gentleman's case? You just test it, right? 
So positivism is about if you want to test an existing theory, whether this theory applied to this guy, is it applied to this guy? That is what uh, the only thing a positivism can do. So if you want to really find out a solution to cure the blood sugar, you would develop a new theory where you never test a theory, you build a theory, right? Let me come back again. The meaning of positivism is about testing a theory. The meaning of phenomenology or phenomenism is about building a theory, developing a new theory, by right? two different philosophers. Depending on your research, if it is about managing your blood sugar, you should approach positivism. And if it is about curing your blood sugar, you should approach phenomenology, phenomenism. You never do either way, because if you do positivism, you're never going to solve your blood sugar problem permanently. You're never going to cure your blood sugar. A positivism approach cannot find that out for you. And if you really want to find out how to cure the blood sugar, you should definitely do phenomenology research where you can build some new theory that can cure your blood sugar. And to find out to manage your blood sugar, doing a phenomenology research is too much because it's going to be the reinvention of beer. You don't need to do it. As I said, if you want to rent a house for two years, you don't need to go for a title check. It is too much. You, you don't need to waste your time on that. And if you want to buy a house, it is not enough for you to just to check the air conditioning. You have to check the title. That is not enough if you do the title, the, the AZ uh, and the conditions check. You have to check the title check. Right? So two different philosophies. If you want to do, buy an apartment, you have a philosophy. If you want to rent an apartment, you have a philosophy. If you want to cure a blood sugar, you have a philosophy. If you want to manage your blood sugar, you have a different philosophy. Right? You can't go for a cross practice. If you go for a cross practice, it will be either expensive or you won't be able to find the answer. If you do positivism to cure the blood sugar, you won't find the answer. If you use phenomenology to manage the blood sugar, it's too much for you. It's based off your energy and the time and the rest of it, right? So two different philosophies. I think it's clear a little bit. Let's go to the next one, next philosophy. Subjectivism and objectivism. These are uh, two different philosophies in here. Uh, let me talk about subjectivism and the objectivism. Objectivism is, is really this, uh, the, Object is about the feelings, emotions. Subject is about uh, something fact, measurable, uh, visible, quantifiable that way. Let me take an example to understand this as well. Now, I always take this question when I teach this uh, research methodology. The question is this very clear question and very, very much debated question as well. Does Good. Exist. Right, that's a question. This question is existing. Does God exist? This question is existing uh, since the world's inception. Whenever the world was made, this question is that people, some people said there is God and some people still say there is no God. Some people still say there is God. And the answer, the question is not answered still yet. Okay. That's why there are people, they, they don't believe in God and there are people they believe in God, right, as well. So the answer, the question is not, not, uh, not answered yet. Okay. So now the question has been given to you. You are the researcher and they said, please go and find out whether the God exists exist or not. Then you are the man to do the research. Now to do this research, you should definitely follow the phenomenology, not the uh, positivism, because you're going to find out an answer. You're going to find out an answer, find out an answer which is uh, not known before. So you're going to build a theory here. You're not going to test a theory. So this is not the right one. Phenomenology is right to find out uh, something new. And with that, another terminology, another philosophy involved in, in here 
the subjectivism and the objectivism. When I'm calling it something subjective, you should see something, you should see the fact, you should, uh, you should be able to measure it, you should be able to quantify it to establish it. And the objectivism is about your personal feelings and the emotions, okay? Now, let me say, can you do a research here based on the subjectivism philosophy? Or can you do a research based on this objectivism philosophy? If you do subjectivism philosophy, you don't need to really do a research. Your answer is obviously here because you can't quantify the research, the, the goat. You can't see any fact that the, the, the uh, goat, just you saw him before your eyes, you can't do it. And your goat is not visible to you. If you can travel to the sky or wherever you believe that the goat would be existing, you go to any part of this universe and see whether the goat is existing, you would come back to the earth with an answer, there's no goat, right? Because you can't quantify, you can't touch him, you can't measure him, uh, you, can't, uh, visit, you, can't, you can't see him before your eyes, he's not visible, right? But if you do this, objectivism, okay? There's a possibility that you would find out, yes, there is God existing because it's about feelings. In other words, you can't touch the God, but you can feel the God. You can't touch the God, but you can feel the God. It is something connected to your emotion. You can feel the God. So you, you can't go uh, and find where the God is. You can't uh, go with a big uh, telescope or some other uh, things. Uh, and then you, you travel, you take your, one of the vehicles and you go everywhere in the world of the universe and you look for him, you can't see him. But when you travel around, you may feel that the God is existing. If you feel that way, and you can say, I felt God and God is existing that way. So if you want to find out whether the God is existing, the right philosophy is this, not this one. Because if you use this, you don't need to travel around. If you use subjectivism, you don't need to travel around. You don't need to do a research because your research is already there. You can't see it. So you can't, your answer is going to be no good. So you don't need to do the research here. But if you use objectivism, there's an opportunity. There's, there's a probability chance that you may find out if the God uh, exists. And let me take an example here to connect this to a business context. Let's say, if you want to find out uh, if there is any connection to the promotion you do, to the sales you have, you can use subjectivism because we can measure promotions in numbers. How much money you spent, how many advertisements you sent, and how many days you applied that advertisement, and how many customers they called in. All these things you can measure in numbers, measurable. So it is possible. Right, and the sales as well. You can do subjectivism because you can measure sales in certain things. So that philosophy is yes. But if you're talking about your customer satisfaction, if you're talking about employee motivation, those kind of research just cannot be measured in terms of numbers and visible stuffs and things. It can only be felt because those are all connected to human emotions, behaviors. So if you want to study those kind of things, you should definitely use objectivism, not the subjectivism, okay? So this is the basic. If you want to study a problem, you should have a philosophy and depending on the philosophy only, your answer is desired. The quality of your answer is depending on the philosophy you use. Philosophy is the first part of your epistemology, right? So positivism, phenomenology, subjectivism and objectivism. Those are the main philosophies that we could use in our business researches. Since we are all doing these uh, business studies in bachelor's, master's and PhD. But if you do something in psychology, in law, in science, in some other social scientific researches, there are so many other philosophies as well. And I don't want to discuss all these things, though I have learned some of it in my psychology master's. I don't want to confuse you since we are all doing business. Research. And when the time uh, comes, if you need to know about that as well, we can have a discussion on it later. Otherwise, it will be confusing to you. These four uh, uh, philosophies are enough. There are so many other, let me name some of those. Uh, uh, interpretivism, but there are many like that. So we don't need to discuss all of those here. It is a little bit uh, overloaded 
will be. So let's have a look at all these four. Positivism, phenomenology, subjectivism, and objectivism. So I think, I hope you have got uh, tonight this short message on this philosophy. And we have the uh, uh, approach and the strategies uh, to come uh, on the next session, next Sunday. And I see you all on next Sunday. Till then, have a great uh, night and have a great safer week ahead. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you.